My name is Sebastian Thuan. I am the uh, founder of Udacity, and I am an expert on artificial intelligence. I would say the most common mistake is to overlook artificial intelligence. That's a mistake because AI will change every aspect of professional work. The second most common mistake is to dictate artificial intelligence as part of the strategy without having the right resources in place, without having the right people in place. And it's not against your existing people. It's more existing mid-level managers uh, not knowing what AI is and how to use it will likely be scared because they hear Sebastian say it's going to change your job. Your technical people might not be understanding what's possible, what's not possible, and they might reject it. So I think getting the DNA of AI first inside a company requires not just a change at the top, but it changed the entire set of people. I was uh, in charge of uh, Project Google Brain uh, at Google, which has become a transformative program for all of Google. Google uses Google Brain, which is deep learning, for tasks such as image indexing, video indexing, natural language translation, in a way that really put the, the company um, in, on an incredibly uh, positive growth path. That same will happen in your industry. So if you don't, uh, don't do it for your company, uh, don't wait until your competitors do it because they might be able to get massively better results using AI. I, I want to make you a promise, uh, a 100x promise. For every dollar you put into my company, Udacity, we'll get you $100 of value back. And if you're disappointed, then send me email at thrun at udacity.com and we will reimburse you. And here's, here's how it works. Getting another degree in, in, in machine learning as a manager or as a technical person will might cost you $1,000, $2,000, $3,000, depending how fast you are. Hiring a machine learning expert, either on the manager's side or as an engineer, is almost, almost impossible. It's incredibly hard even for us here. And the sign-up bonuses we pay are often $100,000 or more. So just from that perspective, I think if you can train yourself, if you can train your people, I hope that the payback will be 100x. And if not, you have my guarantee for your money back. Our program, our executive program, will really demystify AI and push it from this, oh my God, this is a scary thing, I don't know how to deal with it, to something that people can manage. And you need that DNA in your entire management chain because if you don't have it, then people will reject it. Um, this program is basically just a get to know AI, like have it be your friend, understand how it works so you can leverage it and, and you can become a superhuman. Udacity works with many, many hundreds of companies and the most common request we have received is, can there be an executive program that not just teaches our engineers AI, but our managers AI? And this is this program really. I firmly believe that education is key to every innovation. Uh, there's a saying, if you catch a man or a woman a fish, he or she has food for the night. But if you teach them how to fish, they have food for the rest of their lives. That's true for every new technology. So if you heard about AI, and you want to unleash its powers, you have to somehow get on top of this. And this is what this program is all about, to give you the skill set, the knowledge, and the confidence to use this new technology. Why now? Well, what are you waiting for? This is the hottest thing on the planet by now. AI will transform every piece of human work. And if you don't believe it, one thing that we've seen to, to, so far is that any amount of repetitive work, AI can pick up and start doing as good as people very quickly and then make people better and faster. Don't miss out on that opportunity because all of your competitors will do the same thing. You'll find AI being leveraged massively, uh, not just in technology companies like Amazon and Netflix, who are, have AI at the core of their existence, but also in telecoms like AT&T, or in oil companies like BP, which claims that it has increased its profits by multiple billions by using data science and AI. Uh, the, the numbers are actually quite interesting because what you find today is by being smart about your data, you can detect efficiencies, you can improve your workforce, you can uh, improve the customer experience no matter who your customers are. And companies who are at the forefront of using it will have an edge uh, ahead of everybody else. I think there's a very vibrant debate about AI and, uh, and, and its use in, in, in 
public when it comes to things like biases. For example, if you train face recognition, but you only train on white Caucasian men, then you can't really expect it to work well with different populations. And that's something I think that that level of discussion is worthwhile because it exposes our intrinsic biases in society. And if you believe, as I do, that we should be minimally or unbiased as possible, then um, it's important for you to understand that these biases uh, can be eradicated by just better use of technology. The way I look at artificial intelligence, it's, it's a tool. It's a tool like a shovel. A shovel you can use to dig for gold, uh, but you have to choose where to use it. So you can use this tool to find patterns in your business data, your operations data, your customer data, and start improving understanding those fields and transforming them. But it's up to you to use the tool in a meaningful way. What we've learned at Udacity is that there's two levels of training for AI. There's the engineer training, like how to use the most modern tools and be effective. And then there's the management training, and that's equally important. How can you as a manager understand this tool, know what to expect and what not to expect, and leverage for the better part of your business? This program obviously deals with the second. It really empowers leadership to understand and use AI. Every industry will be disrupted, and here's why. In almost every industry, uh, is defined by people doing highly repetitive work, whether you're an accountant, you're a banker, you're a lawyer, you're a medical doctor. AI has the capability of looking over our shoulders when we do repetitive work and pick up those patterns. And once it picks up those patterns, it can do the work for us. Here's the disruption. It also can help novel people to be better at their job. Right? Who would not want a better doctor or a better lawyer? So these things will be as profound as the steam engine has been to the transformation of agriculture. Three, four hundred years ago, almost all of us worked in farming. Today, it's less than 2%. Today, almost all of us work in offices doing repetitive work. Maybe in the future, there'll be a time when less than 2% of the number of people that do the work today can do the work tomorrow. Imagine what this does to your business. I personally believe that the medical industry uh, is ripe for a major disruption, specifically when it comes to diagnosing diseases. Uh, there's a lot of diseases that kill us, like cancer or stroke, that come uh, non-symptomatic for a long time. Like your, your first symptom of a pancreatic cancer might be a, a back pain or a headache, at which point it's often too late to, to, to treat. I believe AI will be a pervasive method to look at our health at home. So every time we touch a steering wheel, we might get a full ECG for our heart. Every time we take a shower, we might get a full skin exam for skin cancer. That list is endless, and I really believe in the future we will be able to prevent many deadly diseases using AI at your home as a pervasive, continual diagnostic system. There's been a number of Udacity clients who've uh, put AI first, and without disclosing business details, I happen to know that companies like AT&T's and leaders like BP and Airbus have really benefited tremendously from bringing AI into many aspects of their business. These are large-scale businesses. They face large-scale logistics and organizational problems. They have large-scale customer exposure. And in all of these things, a very careful study and analysis of data really helps these companies to be much, much better. I would say the very first step towards this transformation is a CEO focus on artificial intelligence because the culture of a company, in my opinion, is set by the CEO and the C-suite of people. But it's not done with this. The next step is to really get the troops on board. With any new technology, there's usually a fear and a rejection of new technology because it might end up costing you your job. Um, so it's important to tell people how to use these, these technologies as their friend and make them more powerful inside a corporation by using them rather than rejecting them. And that rejection factor is a big deal. Um, that's really hard for any big company to go from an era pre-AI where a lot of the work was done manually to an AI era. Often um, business leaders forget to take their people along. 
Um, it's very easy to dictate we're going to go in this direction, but not giving your troops the tool set, the toolkit to go there. Specifically, the education, the knowledge, the, the, the mastery of the technical tools, and so on. AI is a transformation for any business that has to touch every single person. It can't just touch one level of people. It can't just be the engineers or the managers. It has to be everybody. Often people think of AI as this ultra-intelligent thing that you get and it's just going to enslave you or rule you or do everything for you. And that is, I think, a false vision. Uh, AI is much more technical. AI is machine learning. is, is basically a, a technology to find certain patterns, but to make it useful is, requires a lot of detailed work in the field to get the data into the right format, to use the right tools and interpret the outputs. That's where I think uh, people make mistakes. So as, say, you engage in this wonderful course we're building for you, um, you will hopefully understand much better what the true advantages are, how to really leverage AI in your organization. First of all, you have to have an open mind uh, about new things. Uh, I think standing still is just not an option for any company anymore. I'd say teach yourself, train yourself, and, and get a realistic expectation. Don't just go for the hype. Um, and then make it part of your strategy. Really make it part of your strategy to transform your business using AI and let your people that work with you be trained and have them be on the table when it comes to transformation. Any transformation is a sequence of many, 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 many steps. It doesn't happen overnight. But if you want to climb that mountain, you might as well start climbing today. When I advise corporations how to use AI, I really want to drill down into the specifics and understand what is the specific problem you might use it for and what's a great way to leverage artificial intelligence. Um, it's one thing to say, look, my organization is AI first, but it's much more important to really understand where the opportunities really are and what success looks like. So I, as I occasionally consult company, companies, we often drill down and, and ask all the thorny questions, and in doing so, we get much more clarity. My advice to all business leaders is this is going to be a much more massive transformation than you can possibly imagine. In fact, it's going to be more massive than any other transformation you've seen in the past, be it cloud, be it mobile. AI is bigger. And the reason why is you are paying your people to do highly repetitive work, right? And when AI comes in, all that repetitive work will be done by the machines and possibly even better than by your own people. Be ready for this because it will change your business. We've seen AI uh, move from its infancy to a massively new technology in the last three to four years. And quite frankly, the only thing that changes is the size of the machines and data sets. As we go forward, AI, of course, uh, has the capability to learn faster than people can learn. If you use an AI to watch 10,000 people do their work, the AI will pick up the best practices from those 10,000 people faster than any person can do it. And that means for me in 20 years from now, AI will be doing most of our work today. Most of our work today is remedial, it's repetitive, whether you're a doctor or a lawyer. In 20 years from now, they'll all be done by AI. If you decide not to adopt AI uh, in most businesses, good luck, really good luck. There might be some businesses, like if you're a massage therapist, you might not need it. If you're a high school teacher, you might probably need less of it. Um, but even if you're a bus driver, you'll need it because guess what? Bus drivers are being replaced by self-driving buses. If you're a pilot, if you're an accountant, if you're a lawyer, if you're a medical doctor, possibly even as a CEO. As a CEO, 80% of my work is repetitive and I can't wait to have a smart AI partner on my side to do this 80% of my work for me. So for most of my career, I've worked on self-driving cars, which uh, uses artificial intelligence to drive safer than a human can drive. And here's some really interesting insight from this work. Contrasting self-driving cars with human drivers. I assume you drive a car, so do I. Uh, you probably once or twice in your life made a mistake, so have I. And we tend to learn from our mistakes, but nobody else does. The person right next to me has to make their own mistakes. The reason why we lose 1.2 million people in every year on, self on, on car accidents 
is because we're making the same mistake over and over and over and over again. Now let's talk about AI. If you power an, a car with AI and that car, God forbid, makes a mistake, then the car will learn from it and so will all the other cars, including all the future unborn cars will never make that same mistake again. Just imagine that we could do this with people, that if you make a mistake, say you text, okay, and you cause an accident, no one would ever text again because everybody learned from this mistake. What's the lesson here? The lesson here is AI will evolve faster than people will evolve. So imagine you want to use AI for accounting. And in the beginning, it's very clumsy. It makes lots of mistakes. So does your junior accountant say. But your junior accountant will learn, but your next junior accountant has to do the same stuff over again. Whereas your AI will learn and will never make the same mistake again, no matter how often you use it. And that is the true power of artificial intelligence. Like it's almost like if your children are born with all your knowledge, like all your degrees, all your languages you speak in day one, that's what AI does to machines. Don't underestimate the significance of that ability to learn. There are many, many, many courses out there in AI, and the focus of online education has really been on, on technical things, how, how to become an engineer. And I know that's, that's scary for many people and actually unnecessary. For managers, what we really believe is you should know how to manage AI. And what does it mean? Your team will come to you with important problems. You should be a thought leader. You should be um, a visionary. You should be an execution-oriented manager, an enabler. And to do this, you have to understand what AI is. You can't just do this if you don't understand what it is. And I, I get it. I mean, most of us, when we get our degree, AI wasn't a big topic. But you know what? Now it is. So now is the time to really understand what's behind it. And if you do this, your people will be happy because you'll be a good manager and you'll be able to lead them. And your company will be happy because as AI is being leveraged inside your business, your business become better and more efficient.